Hey guys, welcome to the first vlog of the new year. Since it's January and ad rates are down, I'm probably going to do something that most people probably won't find interesting, except for a select few on this channel. We're going to be looking at Vintage Max! We're going to be unboxing some Vintage Max and see if they work. And, as you can tell by the title, it's going to be some iBook clamshells. I've been busy for the past two months, so these boxes that are filled with iBook clamshells have been sitting here for about two months, just waiting for me to open them. And this is unrelated, I just put it here because I thought it looked cool. I got this at Bookman's just because it was only $35. And it comes with everything here except for the download code of the game. I honestly don't know if I want to keep it or smash it, but this is not what the video is about. Okay, we're gonna be unboxing this one first. This box contains two iBook clamshells. Ooh. iBook number one and iBook number two. They were separate listings, but I bought them together, so I got a discount on the shipping. And they were both listed as for parts or not working, so let's see if they are truly non-working. This one's kind of nasty. This one is way, well, not that much cleaner actually. As you can tell already on the outside, this one is already missing some things. And this one was only $25. Ooh, the keyboard's nice and yellow, just how I like it. And some hair, lovely. Mmm. And this one was $40, and on the outside, it has almost every single component there, including the battery. Opening it up, you can see why I bought two of these, because this one was missing one key, so I just said screw it and bought another one just for one key. Except right now I'm kind of regretting it, because this keyboard is more yellow, so if I take this key off and put it on here, it won't match, but who cares. But I also decided to get another one just in case this doesn't work at all so I can just like see if this one works and just like keep the one that's working. And I forgot to mention that I'm going to be destroying the one that's not working or in worse condition on my main channel. So look forward to that. I really hope this one's working. Ooh, this one has an airport card already installed and I can see it has a 10 gig hard drive. Hopefully that's working. And this, oh. Well, I ripped off the key I need, so we're just gonna put that on here. Eh, it doesn't look too mismatched, so eh, whatever. Ooh, there's an airport card and a bunch of hair. Ugh. Disgusting! And it also has a 10 gigabyte hard drive. If both of these machines have those parts, I'm pretty sure it also has RAM. Let's boot it up and see if that's true. Plugging it in. And the light on the charger was green for a second, then it turned off. Not a good sign. Okay, keeping it pushed down looks like it will help. And pushing the power button. Oh, damn it. Oh, got it. Okay, it's booting up. Hurry up, please. Ooh, what a beautiful background. Almost done booting. Amanda. Hey, Amanda, if you're watching this. What's this picture? Oh, the picture is just the background right now. What else is on this computer? A file named Panda's New Pics. Ooh, there's a bunch of female names on it. Let's open the one that says Gunslinger Girl. Oh, wonderful. Anime. What about this? Ooh. Up. Ah, I accidentally let off the pressure on the charger, so it shut down, which is probably good because I shouldn't be looking through people's photos that they haven't wiped off their hard drive. Okay, so this is probably going to be the one that I'm destroying. Unless this one doesn't work. Does it have the same charger problem? No, it doesn't. Good sign so far. Please work, please work, please work. Yes. Ah. God damn it. <laughs> well, you can still see the happy Mac. This one's still running Mac OS 9. There's a candy cane app in the middle. And there's this thing in the bottom of the corner that says classroom. So it looks like this was a school computer, which explains all the cracks because kids can be little shits. Looks like this was used up until 2003 and 2004. Ooh, classified school shit. This is what you get for not wiping the drive. First quarter. 
We got in the grades. Let's see what's the worst grade on here. I see a D, another D, any Fs? Oh, <laughs> Jeremy Titus <laughs> with a 20%. All right, no more looking at personal information. Man, the screen is tough. How did they manage to break it in the first place? <laughs> Made the screen bleed some more. <laughs> Shut down. So for the repairs of these two iBook clamshell indigos, I'll be moving this screen to this one. And vice versa, so I can still smash this. And you'll see all the restoration and repairing later in the video. But for now, let's unbox the other iBook clamshell. I hope I didn't crack the screen of this one, cause I used this box as a step stool once. Has a new egg box. Go ahead, review me. Perfect. This Ibo clamshell was $100 plus $30 shipping, and it was listed as for parts and not working, and it's that expensive because. Fuck, I hate packing peanuts. It's a key lime model. Let's see how bad it is, because these usually go for. $200 slash $300 if it's in perfect working order. Okay, so first of all, there's all this tape residue and the big Apple logo part is missing. Bottom looks fine and it has the battery, but it's missing the disk drive cover. The inside, it has no keys on the keyboard. No airport card, but it has a 10 gigabyte hard drive. Will it boot? There's a line on the screen, and it can't find the operating system. As you saw, there was a hard drive inside, so I'm wondering if the hard drive's broken, or if they just deleted the OS. We can find that out! Give me a second. Ugh, can we get this disk drive out? Oh, <gasps> force field for good. And it has a public library sticker still on it, so... This one is a lost fee, but we're just gonna... Put in the install disk for Mac OS 9. God damn it. Which one's the C key? That one. Okay, we got it to boot from the disk. And it looks like the hard drive is alive since it shows up. Initialize. And let's just install Mac OS 9. Ugh, 19 minutes. It's 7 a.m. right now, and I haven't slept yet. Ugh, I want to get this over with. Hurry up. So, while this is installing Mac OS 9, I should say that I did not buy this to put in my collection. Several months ago, I promised if I got 10k likes on a video, I would smash a rare iBook clamshell key lime color. And this is the iBook clamshell key lime I chose, since it was only $100. But I'm also gonna try to restore some stuff on here too to make it look like new in the video so more people get pissed off. For example, the keyless keyboard. I'll be replacing it with this dirty keyboard from this crappy iBook clamshell. And the only reason I'm installing Mac OS 9 on it is for presentation for the video where I'm gonna be smashing it. Looks like the installation has finished, so we can quit and we can restart. Okay, it successfully booted into the OS. Look at the pretty lime wallpaper it comes with to match the iBook. Shut down. And so for this part of the video, I'm gonna be cleaning up and restoring these two iBooks and using this one in the middle for parts. After I go to bed and wake up at some time late in the evening, good night. First, I started out vacuuming the indigo I was gonna destroy cause there was so much hair inside. Then, I took the keyboard from the dirty indigo and I swapped it with the key limes. For the iBooks, I am using the iBook clamshell disassembly video from the 8-bit guy to take it apart. I am also watching a Canadian show about people who are bad drivers to keep myself entertained. So for the indigo I'm destroying, I'm also taking out the hard drive, just in case I get another iBook clamshell that needs one. And I kind of want to finish looking through it. Is that creepy? Yep. And here I am now, taking apart the indigo that I want in my collection. I wanted to completely take apart the casing around the screen because I just wanted to swap the screens and nothing else. But I never done that before, so this video I found was pretty helpful. After that, I ran into a problem. 
The two screens were each made by different manufacturers. The cracked one was a Samsung, and the good one was an IBM. I was stupid, and I didn't look up if the screens were cross-compatible, and the screen connectors fit each other, so I thought it wouldn't be a problem. Oh, how wrong I was. And I was about to find that out. I partly put the iBooks back together, tested it, and there was only white. Then, I decided to Google if different brands of iBook clamshell screens would work with one another, and I came across this page saying they won't. I wasn't going to give up hope yet, as I thought the screens would only be incompatible if I took the screen out of the casings and switched them. I decided to try putting the screens back in their original casings and swap out both the screen and the casings between the two iBooks. At this point, I had been working for hours. My iPad and AirPods had died, so I was a little impatient and angry, not following the step-by-step -step guide, forgetting to put back several screws and components, realizing that, going back and correcting those mistakes, wasting more time, and getting more frustrated. I was also trying to force components in when they had a hard time fitting together. This ended with me breaking off a screw hole in the bottom casing of the indigo I wanted in my collection, so I had to replace the entire bottom casing with the one from the dirty indigo. Now, I was finally finished with the indigo I wanted in my collection, and decided to see if the swapped screen with casing would work. It didn't. So I just said, Fuck it. I'm done. And I decided I didn't care enough to take it apart again, to swap the screens again, so I was just gonna leave it like that. But, I still had the indigo I was gonna smash, still disassembled, and I really wanted to be done with it, so I was even more forceful on it when parts wouldn't fit together. This is the picture of virginity. Someone fighting with a vintage laptop at 5am. I also forgot to put in this part after I was done assembling, so I just threw it away, cause I was just gonna be destroying it anyway. I needed to calm down, so I took my irrational anger out in Smash Bros for a couple of hours, then I went to bed. So, I went to sleep, woke up, and I'm calm now, and I guess I can see that it was kind of my fault for not checking the screen brands and if they were compatible with each other. Will I ever try to repair another iBook clamshell again? Maybe. I then wanted to see if the key lime I was going to destroy had a Samsung screen, and surely enough, it did. My OCD now would not let me rest until I had a fully functional iBook clamshell indigo. I had to take that screen and put it in there, then take that screen and put it in here, and finally take that screen and put it in there. Fun. To begin, I took out the screen from the key lime. Note that the movie I'm watching I totally got that legally. Next, I took out both screens from both of the Indigo's casings. I was also gonna swap the screen casings back to their original iBook too. I put the IBM screen back in its original iBook, and then I swapped the two Samsung screens. So the key line would get the cracked one, and the clean Indigo would get the good one. This time, disassembly and reassembly was quicker because I was more calm. And I decided not to test any iBooks before all of them were reassembled, so I wouldn't be angry if I tested one, and if the repair didn't work, I wouldn't reassemble the rest angrily and make mistakes. With all of them put back together again, with the correct parts, it's time to test them. Ugh, oh, so nervous iBook clamshell keyline. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Man, I'm gonna die alone. Oh, three, two, one. Oh. Now, I have to admit that I took my first L trying to repair something on video. I probably broke a screen connector the first time around, so there's nothing else I can do to get it 100% functional now. I was done for real this time. It's probably never gonna be powered on much anyway. I knew that I wasted even more hours, so I had to let out more of my anger. And Smash Bros wasn't gonna cut it this time. <laughs> on to the cleaning and restoration process. I am using the magical WD-40 and rubbing alcohol. If you're wondering why I'm cleaning the iBooks I'm planning on destroying, it's because if they look really good in a smashing video, it will make people more pissed off, which means more views. 
and it seems like cleaning is going way better than repairing because I was easily able to get most major marks and residue off easily. I'm not cleaning the keyboards though because it's too much work. And for the indigo iBook that's gonna be destroyed, I took off the leaf from the other indigo and put it on that. For the keyline that's gonna be destroyed, I had another keylime iBook with the full logo, so I took the apple off of that one and put it on the one about to be smashed. I'll put the logo pieces back to their original iBooks after I'm done with the destruction. And here's what the indigo iBook that's gonna be destroyed looks like after cleaning. Here's what the indigo iBook that's gonna be in my collection looks like after cleaning. Finally, here's what the keylime iBook that's gonna be destroyed looks like after cleaning. Alright, so, thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. Look forward to seeing these destroyed. Eh. And I'll see you with that later. Bye.